This is the 2024 Volvo C40 Recharge Twin Motor Ultimate. It's a stylish and sporty all-electric four-door that packs quite a punch. In this video, we're gonna check out all the features and then go on an adventure. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Volvo is continuing to make big moves in electric. Fact is, if you go to their website right now, you will see a majority of the vehicles they offer are electrified. The C40 here is the smallest all-electric option. It starts at just under $54,000, and it shares a lot of hardware with the more rugged XC40. The model we're testing today is the Twin Motor Ultimate. Prices you see it here, $61,745 US dollars, including destination. As the name suggests, this particular C40 packs two electric motors, one in the front and another in the back. Together, they produce 402 horsepower and 494 pound-feet of torque. This setup not only achieves higher performance than the single motor version, it also powers the all-wheel drive system. Even though it looks very similar to last year's model, the electric motors here are actually all new, and Volvo says that these motors are more efficient. The battery is now a 78 kilowatt hour lithium ion unit. That's an increase of three kilowatt hours from the 2023 model. That along with the better motors gives the 2024 C40 an EPA rated range of up to 257 miles, slightly better than the competition, notably the Genesis GV60 with all wheel drive. That has a 77.4 kilowatt hour pack and a maximum 248 miles of range. On the subject of batteries, the single motor rear wheel drive version of the C40 has a larger 82 kilowatt hour unit for an impressive max range of 297 miles. All C40s support 200 kilowatt DC fast charging, which in theory should get the battery from 10 to 80% in just under 30 minutes. We'll test that out a little bit later. Volvo claims a zero to 60 time of the C40 twin motor ultimate at only 4.6 seconds. Of course, this is an electric car, so up front you don't get an engine. Instead, you get a small cargo space with a charging cable. Ta-da! This supports both level one and level two charging. They have a little adapter for your standard 110. For a compact vehicle, these are shockingly large wheels. They're 20 inches and they are wrapped in Pirellis. Which one are these? Scorpion All Seasons. Right, no off-roading today or at least not much. The most significant difference between this and the XC40 is the shape of the back. This has more of a fastback style design, whereas the XC40 is more like a traditional crossover, pretty boxy. Now, of course, that does affect cargo capacity. With all the seats up, you get 15 cubic feet. Lift this up to get to the jack and some extra storage. And then you can also leave it like this and you have hooks for grocery bags which is a cool trick. Fold all the seats flat for up to 49 cubic feet overall. This is such a nice flat floor. You can absolutely sleep in it if you're short enough. I'm six foot one, my legs don't really fit unless I scrunch up. But if you're on the short side, you could absolutely sleep back here. Let's see if we fit in the second row. Oh, it's not too bad. I mean, for a compact, I actually fit pretty good. I got room for my knees. I even get vents here. I get seat warmers and two USB-Cs. And this massive panorama sunroof, excellent. Fold down the center section. I get an armrest with cup holders. And this is also a pass-through if I have long objects, like skis. That way you can transport four people plus the skis. It's very nice. This looks nice. This is one of those vehicles like the Volkswagen ID4 that turns on the moment you sit in it. It's not always my favorite thing because sometimes I actually want to leave my car running when I'm not in it. Don't get that option here. As soon as I put it into drive, basically everything comes alive. These seats, very comfortable. They are wrapped in wool of all things. In fact, this is the very first all vegan <laughs> 
vehicle from Volvo. We have a nice synthetic wrapped steering wheel. We have this lovely crystal shifter. We do get a digital dash here as well as infotainment. And you will note there's Google everywhere here because yeah, they've partnered with Google for most of their systems here. You get Google Maps on the inside and Google OS over here. And it's very tightly integrated. So like if I have a Google account that's logged in, I can pull up my common navigation items, my own per personal places, stuff like that. Now, there has been a minor modification to the system for 2024. It actually is a little bit different. It's not a very big tablet, but I think it's big enough for functionality. We do have aircon on the bottom row. Touch a button, it is instantaneous. We get three stages of heat on the wheel. We get three stages of heat in the seat. There is no cooling in these seats though, even though this is an ultimate addition. We do get lots of power adjustments, forward, back, I get lumbar and leg. It is a smallish vehicle, but I think it actually uses space very effectively. The seats are great. Everything falls to hand nicely. I would have liked to have physical aircon controls, but they at least give me defrost hazards and a stereo volume knob down there. Below that, we do get a charging pad for mobile devices. And under that, we do get a couple cup holders surrounded in this piano black. Now in here, we get a little, like this is like a little waste bin, which is cool. Uh, we do have some cables. Let's see, I need a USB-C cable, so let's give that a try and see if Apple CarPlay comes up quick. Allow, and boom, there we go. We now have Apple CarPlay up. So even though this is an Android-based system, yes, you can run Apple CarPlay. Let's see, is it wireless? No, it does require a cable. Volvo synonymous with safety. Obviously, we have collision mitigation, which has pedestrian and cyclist detection, blind spot warning, switching into reverse. We get a nice surround view camera system, plus we get rear cross traffic alerts. The C40 is available with one of two different stereo systems. The ultimate here, we are loaded with the Harman Kardon sound system, which is the upgraded option. Okay, so what's the plan for today? Well, we're going to take this into the Olympic Mountains uh, because this is not really a trail-ready crossover. It is effectively a hatchback-style car. We don't have a lot of ground clearance, so we're going to take it easy today, but we are going to take it for a drive into the mountains. We're going to see how the mileage shakes out, and then we're going to go take it to a charging station and see how long it takes to charge back up. We are starting off with a not completely full battery. We're looking at around 90% with under 200 miles of total range, but that should be sufficient for today. Let's buckle up and head out. So the weather has gotten a little colder and it's a little rainier. I don't know what kind of conditions we're gonna hit once we get into the mountains. Basically, I'll just deal with it when I get there. It is currently 40 degrees out. I currently am showing 180 miles of range. Oh, let's reset my trip. Uh, how do I reset my trip? Where even is my trip? Okay, so we have <laughs> an infotainment system that is so simplified I don't know where anything is. Let's pull over and figure this out. Okay, so where is a trip? How do I see my trip? See, this is the problem with like super simplified buttons. You can't find any, there's no buttons. Ugh. Okay, go into settings. This is one of those things where obviously if I owned the vehicle, I would have figured this out by now. But uh, right now I'm not even finding a trip of any kind. There's nothing there, there's nothing there. There's no buttons here. Can I, no, that's stereo. Stereo on, stereo, oh, oh! Hit the middle button on the controller and that gets me my trip. We're good to go. So I reset the trip, it shows my range is 180 miles and I'm at 82% charge, but it's also giving me a cold weather warning because it is 40 degrees outside right now. And this car was sitting out overnight because yeah, I don't actually own a garage. So these seats are of course using wool material and I actually like them quite a lot. My wife did not particularly like them. She thought they looked nice, but first thing she saw was just like, these things are not gonna take stains. You know, you have kids in the car, you're shuttling them around. I don't think you wanna have 
this open weave wool, it just seems like it's gonna collect stuff. Even if it technically wipes clean, it's just gonna collect stuff between the weaves. Definitely, I really prefer a synthetic material or even a leather for that case. Obviously, leather isn't vegan. Uh, however, if you wanna go vegan and something that's easier to clean if you have kids, then you definitely wanna go with a synthetic leather. They're actually quite nice these days. Uh, personally though, I like these seats. I think they're really comfortable. I like how I fit. I don't slide around at all, but I wouldn't expect that in a family crossover slash coupe slash electric car like we're driving right now. Even though it's a very dark day, uh, you can't tell really on this inside cabin that there's some interesting illumination. So it's a pattern that looks like a mountain elevation relief and it illuminates. It's kind of cool at night, if you like that kind of thing. Um, I personally just find it a little distracting. I want like minimal lights in my vehicle while I'm driving. Uh, but you know, if you like that kind of thing, it's, it's a unique look. So our mission today is gonna take us 50 miles into the Olympic mountains. There we'll climb a peak, get a look, and then try to find a charger somewhere. <laughs> uh, because even though I have 180 miles of range, 50 miles there, 50 miles back, that's 100. That only leaves me with 80. It's not just gonna, it's just not gonna leave me with a lot of charge when I get this vehicle home. So I'm gonna top it off after we climb up the mountain. So that way we can also see exactly how these range calculations work out. And also we can check out how fast this vehicle charges because of course that is a prime importance to electric car owners. Volvo says that this one can peak out at around 200 kilowatts. So we'll see. Even though this has very quick acceleration and it's very quiet to operate, other than that, you really wouldn't know that it's electric. Cabin is exactly the same as a gas powered Volvo. You have the same little shifter control down here. Just because it's electric doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel. And clearly we have a steering wheel here. So that was not reinvented. The infotainment system for 2024 has been reworked on this car, so it's a little quicker. You still have to dive in for a lot of stuff. I would prefer more physical buttons, but at least they give you controls for volume and the defrost, which is nice. Even though this does come standard with Google Maps built in, you don't have to use Google Maps for everything. Fact is, is that even this map that's integrated into the dashboard can show Apple Maps when you are using Apple mapping software. The good thing about that is it means that I can set the main panel that everybody in the car can see to something else. I can even have an alternate mapping program like Onyx running in the middle while running navigation in the center console. It's kind of a cool setup. According to the trip computer, we've only gone about six miles and we have about 50 to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the next leg of this trip. Well, we're continuing on into the mountains. I have 140 miles of range, and we'll see how this goes. Brief report on my seats, very comfortable. I like them a lot still, no hot spots. Let's go ahead and try adaptive cruise because I have a car in front of me. Now I just hit the little cruise control button on, it automatically sets it to lane centering, though I can turn that off if I want to. It's a little toggle left right here. And this road is definitely on the twisty side and it is more than what this auto steering system really wants to deal with, but let's see. So is it gonna keep us centered? And it's pacing the car in front of us very nicely. Yeah, I would say that's kind of what you want. I can also change my gapping with these buttons up here. I wanna get a little bit closer. Let's see how fast it gives up the ghost here on the turn. Uh, I gotta keep my hands on it because of that rail. Uh, you know, it actually, whoa, oversteered. <laughs> okay, it's a little bumbly in finding its uh, steering line, but on mostly straight stuff, it is great. So that can help reduce fatigue on long trips. I, I like that feature, the auto steer, so long as you can turn it off. And on this one, you can. Um, once it's on, you just toggle to the right, and then it just goes to adaptive cruise without the lane tracing feature. Okay. We got a little ways to go here still, but I will check back in as we get off the highway and turn off into the mountains. Driving this on curvy highways is actually pretty nice. You know, it's planted, it has good suspension. I really like the way that it, it moves in the corners. 
And of course, that power when you want it, boom. <laughs> got a car in front of us, so I got to be careful there. Okay, and here we go into the mountains. Wait for a car. Oh, I should say that this vehicle actually does support single pedal driving. It's not my thing, but if you like that, uh, let's go ahead and click on driving under settings and go all the way down to one pedal. So if I turn on one pedal, I can use the gas pedal to accelerate. And then when I remove my foot off the gas pedal, it'll decelerate all the way to a complete stop. It's literally one pedal driving as its name implies or says outright. Anyway, this is a good if you're doing a lot of city driving. Um, it's also very efficient because it uses a lot of regeneration when you take your foot off the throttle. So you are putting as much power as possible back into the system. Personally, I don't care for it. You can set three different settings here in the C40, uh, either on, off, or auto. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Uh, here you can also uh, change the steering feel. I prefer firm, so that's on right now. And then we also have two drive modes, either standard or off-road. We will test off-road as we get to the top of the hill. It should make it as capable as possible. Keep in mind, this is rolling on 20 inch wheels. It has very little sidewall. We're not gonna do anything too extreme because this is a C40. Now, if it was an XC40, the crossover, more crossover boxy, rugged looking version, we might push things a bit further. But this one is really a performance coupe that kind of is in the style of a crossover. And as far as performance coupe goes, yeah, this thing is, whoo. It's quick <laughs> and it handles really nicely. I like the feeling into the corners. You add a little throttle, you get that sure-footed all-wheel drive push as you exit. Very nice. Let's not uh, use up too much of that battery, shall we? I might end up having to walk home. And I'm not like doing this just to play into the range anxiety of electric cars. This is legit, like I wanted to go here I did quick math in my head. I miscalculated the miles and the charger doesn't exist where I thought a charger existed. So if you're not a fastidious planner, it is possible that electric cars may not be right for you. Just keep that in mind. And it is so wet out today. Well, that's okay. We're gonna head off this pavement and onto a gravel road as we climb up a very small mountain. Add some throttle, woo! Oh, we got some uh, wood down here, no big deal. Add some throttle. Now these are, of course, all season radials. They are not designed for anything too extreme. And I have to say, with this much power, you can get in over your head. Woo! Okay, this is fun. <laughs> but I do have to be really careful because even a modest sized pothole could pinch the wheel and give me a flat. This suspension is amazing. I hardly feel the rocks at all, but I can still feel what the steering wheel is doing, mostly. Let's try a quick launch, see how this thing does. So I'm in drive, no different drive modes, and let's just punch it. Woo! Wow, really smooth acceleration, even on a slippery surface like this. That's impressive. Really good traction control system. Can we get squirrely with it? Let's see, squirrely. No, doesn't want us to. You know, every single time I get out of this car, it turns itself off and I kind of hate that. Now it is quick to re-engage, but still, don't turn my car off. I don't like the idea of it turning on when I sit in it. I just want my car to stay on, you know? So far, this thing is doing amazing. I mean, if you want to go on a forest run, yeah, this car is really great. Now, you're not going to be able to get like back end out tail happy because, I mean, come on, it's a Volvo and they're just not going to let you do that. Now, can I dip into settings and turn off dynamics? Uh, not seeing it here. Now, there is an off-road mode, which, ooh, wow. That really loosens up the wheel. Oh, that's all. That's interesting. 
Let's go back to standard and everything is now all tight again. Okay, and we'll continue our track. Uh, we'll wait to hit off-road mode when we need it a little later. Now this part of the track, I have to be careful because there's a really, it's a big exposure off on the right. Normally a great view, but today just clouds and rain. I can kind of see Hood Canal a little bit there. Major producer of oysters, by the way. Looks like some trees were down here recently, but somebody has been through and cleared them, so that's good. Thank you to the Forest Service. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. It's funny, there's been no storms lately. I guess just from all the rain. Ooh, I like this small vehicle. It gets me through those tight areas. While we're doing this final climb, I can say that this trip has been an hour and a half. It's been about 60 miles and I have 95 miles of range remaining. So a little worse than what the expectation was, but I was probably driving worse than it would expect me to. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's right in there. Okay, and then we have final climb to the top. Uh, let's do the hard line. This really um, was a problem for the one of the Kias. Uh, I think it was the Kia Sportage had problems with this climb. First, we'll just do it in standard mode, uh, and then we'll switch to off-road mode if we have to. So, what do we got? We have wheel spin. Traction control is really cutting in a lot. Wow. This is where it should have issues with power. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of noises. Okay, let's go ahead and switch this into off-road mode and see how that changes things. Will it increase that wheel braking? Yeah, I'm hearing a thunk, 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 thunk as it's shifting power left to right on those open differentials, moving us forward very slowly. I'm just keeping my, my foot's just in the throttle. I'm not like doing much of anything here. And then up and over. Oh, that would be a spectacular view if it wasn't absolutely overcast and raining. So that's the Volvo C40. As you can tell, it's a very effective off-road system uh, if you need to do stuff like that. I mean, it's a Volvo. You're not going to do rock climbing. But I think for daily driving, for little trips like this, the C40 is amazing. But now it's time to head off of this mountain, back into the city, and try to find a charging station so we can wrap this video up. Whoa, man, it is cold out there. I mean, it's 40 degrees, but add that chill and wow. <sighs> so my battery is now showing I have 47% left. Right, let's put it in reverse. Shows I have 95 miles of range. Should be no problem. Uh, I am, am I still in off-road mode? I am not. So getting out and into the vehicle, again, it resets my drive mode. That's not cool. <sighs> okay, we're in off-road mode. Let's see if this hill descent control system works going backwards. So we're on the tilt. I'm gonna just lift off of the brake. Uh, it does, yeah, it grabs. It's a three mile per hour descent, not my favorite, but it does the job. Let's wrap this up. Oop, bumpy. <laughs> Now then, I'm running back to go get this charged. I show a range of 100 miles remaining. Now it is interesting, there's this range optimizer uh, in the software. It tells me your vehicle will maximize range by limiting climate control functionalities. And I guess I will limit my air cons just so that I can actually get back okay. It's showing me a range of possibilities between 70 miles and 100 miles. Through this whole day, I have to say the seat's been very comfortable really good visibility inside the vehicle. It's just a really nice drive. They really nailed the essentials here. Now, would I spend as much money as this thing is supposed to cost? 
eh, that's kind of a tough one, but I do get it. You know, it's an electric car. It's batteries and motors, and this stuff is still expensive. So if I had the wherewithal, yeah, I'd probably consider something like this. I do think one of the misses here is the fact that this does not come with wireless Apple CarPlay. Like, seriously, guys, this thing's a lot of money. Give us that, please. So we're just a couple minutes away from the charging station in Gig Harbor. It is an Electrify America Level 3 system, DC fast charge, so I should be able to get up and running pretty quick after that. I am down to 16% charge with 35 miles remaining, and I'm averaging 37.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So if we did 120, say 125 miles, uh, and we have 35 miles remaining, uh, three, four, five, six. So we ended up doing about 160 miles based on a 180 mile estimate. I don't think that's bad because all of, some of those miles were gravel roads and a lot of it was also me driving more aggressively than somebody who's trying to get good mileage would do. So I think overall, the system seems to be pretty accurate. So according to the specs, uh, this should charge from 20 to 80% in about 30 minutes. We will see. Ooh, charging stations look busy. Hopefully there's a slot. Now that we've made it to the charger, let's go ahead and plug in on the first available terminal. For some reason, touch payment isn't working on this particular charging station. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the app, go ahead and pick number four, which is what this is, and initiate, oh yeah, okay. So it's broken. Doesn't say it's broken anywhere, but it's clearly broken. Let's move the car to the next terminal over go through the same process. Let's go ahead and touch for charging. Hey, look at that, this one works. I wanna go get some coffee and then when I come back, I'll report on how it charges and we'll wrap this episode up. Okay, so got my coffee and now I just have to wait for this thing to charge. While I'm kicking back here, I can go to YouTube. I can go find a great video to watch. Oh, look at that, driving sports TV, how nice. Because of course this is based on the Android operating system, you can install other applications, but it does come default with both Tubi as well as uh, YouTube. YouTube being my favorite, of course. Now, uh, in terms of charging, we've seen a peak of over 150 kilowatts. Currently it's at 43 because we're coming down off of that, that kind of optimal curve. Uh, the optimal curve, you know, getting up to 150, but then easing it down to around 80, which is where it sat for quite a long time. As we're getting to filling up the battery, it's starting to go down a little bit more. Uh, but the result is the fact that we've been here for 33 minutes and I have successfully charged all the way up to 78%, so that's pretty good. It is taking a little bit longer to charge, but it is 43 degrees out right now, and I did not precondition the battery. So these are definitely not optimal conditions. Um, I think in optimal conditions, clearly you can do a little bit quicker. Overall, very happy with the C40. It got where we needed to go today. It got us back. It's charging very quickly and it's a very comfortable and easy to like ride. Just if you want something that feels like a normal car, but just happens to be electric with a nice powertrain, comfortable feel, and just really nice ergonomics, I think that the Volvo C40 should be on your short list. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share our videos. We make them for you. Hope you enjoy.